Whiskey Jason here. Whiskey from the viewpoint of an American over here in Germany tasting rare and exotic whiskey. I was at the distillery at Bunahaben and I bought a sample pack. Fischai 2022 Bunahaben Day Tasting Kit. On the 3rd of June, there will actually be an online tasting um, at Facebook. I paid 20 pounds for this pack. I just like the design. Very, very well done, guys and girls there at the Bunahaben Distillery. Well done. So um, I got the small pack. There was actually a pack as well with the uh, Cavados um, from, I think it was, what, 90... 1992 when was that i just didn't buy it the bottle was five 400 euros and it was just way out of my uh price range to be very honest so not something i'm really really looking forward there so uh limited editions let's take a look here we have our fashia so that was the 1998 calvados cask finish 400 pounds ouch so what we do did get for twenty pounds was then the two official bottlings plus a sample of the twelve year old. So first of all, the next time I go to the distillery, I get a five pound off um, coupon here, which I do not really need. There's a moin moini uh, that is the peated with the tokaya. We have here what we have here. I always have my problems pronouncing it. I'm going to call it the abain. Arik is how I pronounce it. That was, and we have the 12 year old. So let's pull out the one that we're going to taste here. And in the next video I'll be doing, I'll actually have the other one. I also have four hand fills on Buna, so I might just do a little series on Buna at the moment. So, what am I going to compare it to? Of course, I'm going to compare it to the normal 12 year old Buna. Now, I have a bottle here, and it's always the question of how to read a bottle code. Now, if you have a bottle of Buna, it belongs to the distill group, find the L. That's going to be your bottling line. So I have an L5, bottling line number five, which is normal. And then after that, you'll actually have a time. In my case, I have the, the time that was here. It's very, very small. Um, 4.29. So, no, I have 14.29. So it was 2.29 in the afternoon. On the and then we have three digits. In my case, we have 192, which is the 192th second day in the year 2020. So I have a 20 at the end. So this is a 2020 bottling. So if you take a look at the calendar and you look at the date 192, the 192nd day of the year 2020 was the Friday, the 10th of July. So if I had a request to make to SWA. I would actually request one thing. Uh, I would request a lot of different things, but the one thing I would request is that, hey, could we not just have the same bottling code on all of the different bottles? So just just have a norm. Germans would have done that a long time ago. They would have had a DIN norm, which is the Deutsche Industrie norm, the Deutsch German industrial, industrial norm. They just love doing that. Now, apparently the people in Scotland do not because Almost every other distillery does it whatever they want to. Now, I've read various information here about this. The one said that this is basically the same as this. So this is Oloroso and bourbon matured stock. And they just wait 12 years. They mix it. Sometimes there's more of the bourbon. Sometimes there's more of the Oloroso. Um, I love the 12-year-old cast strength from the Buna. Mwah! That was so good. And at a decent price, to be honest. Cheaper than this. This is 80 pounds. And over here in Germany, I paid, if I bought the big bottle, I would have paid 125 euros for that. So it's a price a little thing here. It is 50.8%. This is 46.3. Yep, 46.3. Typical distill number here. And um, But if I read the website here of this bottle... I have the description here, and it says, basically, um, this means the Arig River. In English, a river located on our beautiful Isle, Isle of Isle. And this feeds on, in onto the Margadale River, the pure spring water source for all of our Bunaba whiskeys. Yay! And the Arig, 
Uh, water is vital for the production process of the distillery, feeling, feeding cooling water for the condensers. Now, this is a marriage of Bunahaban spirit that has been matured in ex bourbon casks and ex Pedro Jimenez sherry octaves casks made from the finest seasoned European oak. Hmm. And this highly concentrated octave casks were hand selected um, to push the boundaries of sherry maturation. Not all whiskies, says the website, stand up to full maturation in sherry casks, let alone specially seasoned octaves. Bunabin, however, really stands up to this challenge. This special limited festival whiskey is quintessentially Bunabin, unpeated, sherried, bold, complex. Bottled with natural color, non-chilled filtered, and with an ABV of 50.8%. This was actually the first whiskey that the new master distiller, his name is Brendan McCarran, tasted when he joined Bunahaben in 2021 on his first visit to the distillery following his appointment. Apparently, he liked it so much that he actually went and said, hey, let's do this. All right, very, very good. So Buna has a nice little website. You can actually go there and go to About Us, our distillery, and then About Us. And you can see that there's three big people that are responsible for a lot of things. We have Andrew Brown. He is the distillery manager, re re responsible for um, compliance and quality. We have uh, Juliana Fadines. She is the master blender. Her job is to actually blend the different bourbon and uh, sherry things together and make them beautiful. And we have now Brendan McCarran, the master distiller who's responsible for actually distilling the whiskey, training the still men and women and so on and doing that job. So, um, so I think Juliana had a lot to do with this more than anyone else. But hey, who knows? On each and every nice little sticker here, we have a, it says here, um, Distillery manager, A, B. So he signed off on it. No one else did. Interesting enough. I like the postcards, people. Well done. Well done. So the first thing that I realized is even though this is a Pedro Jimenez Octaves, about 50 to 80 liters max, let's say 50 to 60, the 12 is darker, at least here in my little room here. So the 12, apparently, also non-chilled filtered, no, um, no color added, um, has more of that wood. Color comes from the wood, right? It should not come with the cherry, I hope. That wood influence here to give this as a nice, beautiful color. Now, I've read other places, it's just not the bourbon. It's actually bourbon Oro Rosso. They mix them and then they actually finish it in the uh, P Pedro Jimenez Octaves. Pedro Jimenez octaves are not a thing that actually is used in the sherry industry. Those are seasoned casks, people, right? So they're using seasoned casks, which is just fine. The question is how much um, whiskeys are in those seasoned casks? How much do they leave in them? And then they actually, and how long was it in these seasoned casks? Nowhere could I find that information, unfortunately. On the label, it says here, I'm just going to read um, the Fashiu 2022 label here. Inspired by the waters of Isla, we read all that, um, expertly mature, mature, married with Oloroso and bourbon matured Bunahaben. The result is beautiful balanced notes of milk, chocolate, raisins. Oh, I'm not going to read the rest. And this gained its unique character in small octaves cast that once held sublime Pedro Jimenez Sherry. Mm. As I said, Pedro Jimenez does not mature in octave casks. You can actually re um, change the size of the barrels and then build use the staves in the octaves but then you season them and nah. okay good now no age statement 125 euros i can get this over here in germany still for 45 euros so i can get two and a half of these for one of these this has an age statement this is darker this is a little bit better on the palate in my opinion than this hmm so why would I be even interested in this? Because it's a special or limited release for Special. And that makes it that much more expensive, that much more 
um, attain, uh, that we want to attain it. Now, this was something that I, when I was at the distillery, they said this bottling, I think they are like 90,000 bottles. Don't quote me on that. But this, um, the Calvados ran out very quickly. The uh, Takaya peated ran out very quickly. This is still available. Why? Because they made so many of these that people could actually get it maybe even up to the festival, maybe after the festival. And that is a very, very good thing. Now on the nose, the raisins. On the nose, darker chocolate, leather. Here, I do get more of a fruitiness. Here, more of a leather moment. Are they almost the same? Nah, they're close. They have the same Bunahaban DNA, but they are definitely different. This with 50.8%, and I don't think it's just the alcohol, smells a little younger. Smells a little bit more alcoholic. This, the 12-year-old Buna, smells a little bit more, I'm sorry for saying so, complex and well-rounded. Now, I am not a fan I'm not a fanboy of Buna 12. I know people who buy this in the cases. I know people who gift this whiskey to anyone and everyone for their birthday. I know people who just love the Buna 12, and they have loved it now for 20 plus years. I like Buna 12. I do not adore Buna 12. Even a blind taste is like, well, it could be a Buna, nah, okay. This is not something where I just flip out and just go, wow. This is something where I go, oh, interesting, nice. What else do you have? And that's my problem with Buna, that many, many people just do not understand why I'm not adoring this whiskey as if it was the best product ever made on the, isle, on the island of Isla. Well, maybe it is. Maybe the other stuff I just like even less. But this is not the thing that I love, adore, and worship. So let's start off with our Fashil bottling. Mm -hmm. what, it, what it seems to be, and I'm being very, very critical, I know, is that I have a somewhat younger spirit. I'm going to say 68 years of age. This is 12. And I put it for another year, maybe even a whole year, maybe just six to eight months, into a Pedro Jimenez octave, and I do this turbo maturation with it. Bam! Smaller casks, more surface to um, fluid ratio. It actually matures in a quicker, not better, not faster, maybe a quicker manner. And I get a lot of that raisins in there. A lot of, I, I personally have always said in the last couple of years, you can take any whiskey and make it good with a Pedro Jimenez cask finish. Now you can take the you can take crap and turn it into almost gold with a Pedro Jimenez finish because Pedro Jimenez just absolutely bulldozers everything else that's in its way. And that's what I get here. I get Pedro Jimenez, Pedro Jimenez, and I get European oak. European oak. A lot of that tannins, a little bit of that chocolate. That's what I get a tiny little bit of the raspberry. And that's what they say actually here. The result is beautifully balanced. Mm -hmm. Notes of milk, chocolate, raisins, raspberries giving way to balsamic vinegar and honeyed macadamians and a deep top toffee finish with special cinnamon burst. Sorry, with a spicy cinnamon burst. I personally don't get the cinnamon, but other people do. So I do get that raspberries. I do get that milk chocolate. I, I get more of a dark chocolate. And I do get a t tiny little bit of that honey. What I do not get is macadamian. What I do not get is balsamico. I love um, balsamic, um, balsamic um, vinegar. Mm. But I just don't get it here. This, on the other hand, the 46.3% in comparison. Mm. Mm. Much rounder. No bite leather dark chocolate now the glendrona 15 beats this any day of the week this is half the price so um the glen Arachi 15 beats this but this is still 20 to 30 percent cheaper the, this is the world we're living in here that this flavor profile 
I used to be able to get this for under 40 euros in Germany. Now it's 44, 48 euros. I've seen shops that had it for 60 euros. So this is 50 to 60% more expensive in 2022 than it was in 2021 at some shops. Hmm. This is something we're going to have to live with. This is the inflation rate that um, Ralfi has been prophesying now for the last two years. It's going to hit whiskey hard. And some of our favorite drams that we used to love, remember the price explosion with Glendronach? Well, it's going to happen in a lot of our favorite distilleries. And some of the big, big companies like Diageo might be slow, but they will learn that some of their best-selling stuff for stuff we love is underpriced for the market at the moment. <sighs> Kleinisch 14, Oben 14, and so on and so on and so on. Um, other distilleries like or other distilling groups like Distill, like Brown Foreman, like other places are going to push up the prices as well because energy is more expensive, because the raw materials are more expensive, because everything's more expensive. And why not? The market will allow it. And if we pay for it and it doesn't sit in the shelves, why not? All right. Um, if I had the choice between one of these bottles and one of those bottles, I would choose this. This is a C whiskey. C minus whiskey in my book. Sorry. I am not a big fan. What I have not done, which I'm going to do now, is I'm going to play with a little bit of water. I'm going to just add a tiny little bit of water, dilute it down to like 48%. Yep, get that raisin, get that Pedro Jimenez, get a little bit of that. It's almost like a a cacao moment here. You know that cacao you make your hot chocolate out of, that pure cacao beans. A little bit of that going on there. I got a tiny little bit of sourness, like a sourdough moment. Mm. Half gone. A lot of oak. A lot, a lot, a lot of that European oak. Not a big fan of the European oak here. I like the European oak as a spice. Here it's a little bit too dominant. What I do like is how it's used here. The master blender. There's a friend of mine. His name is Friendly Mr. Z. His name is Zan Sander Zet. And um, he did actually a blind tasting with Buna. Found six bottles. And he had, I think, four Bunas that have been over the last 20 years. Um, that old bottle, the almost old bottle, the almost the latest and the now the newest. And um, he dated blind and so on. And he had two independents that were also about the same um, ABV level. Which one won? The newest. So I think, and I'm just going to say this, um, from my personal opinion, the uh, Julianne Ferdinand is doing a fantastic job of making great whiskey at Buna. Many people say the old stuff was better. I'm not really sure. I, I especially like that um, cast strength. I do like this. This is a B minus whiskey in my book. It's a C plus whiskey for price, still at 48 euros. This is something I would highly recommend. Can you get other whiskeys a little bit cheaper with 12? Yes, but do you get that flavor profile? Do you get that mouth feel? Do you get that experience and that mmm moment? Probably not. This is, at least in my opinion, one of the best whiskeys out there for under 50 euros from um, Scotland. Wow. And I only gave it a, a B minus. Hmm. But it's still not my favorite. As I said, other people like it more. Maybe I'm just not. Maybe I'm rebellious and I don't will not agree with all the rest of the world out there. Or maybe it's just a flavor profile that I go, yeah, but I like other things better. Could be. And I do get a dryness. I do get a tartness at the end. I do get that European oak as well. Um, a little bit strong. This is much stronger. Not as strong. So I'm giving this a C minus. I'm giving this a D for value for money. So sorry. I would not spend my money 125 euros, 80 pounds on this. I would go out and buy um, the Buna 12 instead. Question of the day. What is your favorite Buna product? It could be the 12-year-old. It could have been a hand fill you did yourself at the, at the distillery. I'm looking here at Food Quig. I think he did that. It could be um, maybe a Stosha. 
one of the young peated whiskeys, independently bottled. It could be something else that they had there. There are so many good Bunas out there. Let's see what you have. I have another four bottles of um, hand fills that I brought from the distillery. I have one more here. Um, oh, what I wanted to do, I actually have a glass here. I'm going to compare the 12 from this little bottle here to the 12 that I have here. Now I have the 2020 bottling, as I mentioned before. And the question is, is there any difference in the um, appearance? And is there any difference in the taste? So a tiny little reference point here. Let's see if that is any different. So, huh. I still think that mine is a tiny little bit darker than the newer one. Richer, creamier, creamier, more leather. A little bit fruitier, more bourbon. So this one, I would actually say the new 12 has more bourbon than the 2020 Buna did. Um, at least that's my uh, initial um, reaction here. Cheers. Mm -hmm. A little bit more of a syrup type of sherry. A little bit more seasoned. Less of the old sherry moment that I had here. Still nice mouth mouthfeel. Very well made. 12 year old. 12 year old. It used to be 12 year old would be all just good enough. And then it was like, oh, the real stuff is 18, 21 year old. Now today, six years after I started my YouTube career with um, whiskey, uh, 12 year olds like the old stuff and the uh, almost unattainable stuff is the 18 and 21 year old because it's just so prohibitively expensive. Yes, it's not even neck pour. It's halfway down. Mm. Much better. Much, much. The 2020 is better than if they use the 2022 or 2021, uh, the Buna 12 here, in my opinion. A lot more sherry influence, a lot more of the um, bourbon influence. Yes, there is a difference. About 15% difference, what I'd say. But that's the way it is. All right. Thank you very much for watching. Whiskey Jason. Don't forget to like, subscribe, and tell others. And also write down in the um, in the uh, comment field which is your favorite Buna product out there. All the best. See you soon. Bye-bye.